For those of you who requested a piggy fish, I got you back. That's what we're going to be making today. If you are a little bit confused and you don't know what a picky fish is, I would recommend checking out this video here. And if you're one of those who don't want to make a picky fish, you can just make a regular pig because the patterns for both are featured in this video. To make a pig or a piggy fish, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, stuffing, a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes, though these are optional. You can embroider on the eyes if you would prefer, as well as eight ply yarn in the color or colors of your choice. We're going to start off our pig by making a magic circle. And then in that magic circle, we're going to do two single crochet. Two half double crochet. And then two more single crochet. And then we're just going to close that up. So at the end there, you should have a total of six stitches. For round two, we're going to work in the back loop only. And the back loop is the part of the stitch that's furthest away from you. We're going to go into the first back loop, single crochet. And then we're going to continue single crocheting into the back loops of all six stitches from the previous round. Round three is also six single crochet, but this time we're going back to working in both loops. For round four, we're going to start off by doing two single crochet, followed by three increases and then one single crochet to finish. Start off with the two single crochet. And then we're going to do three increases in a row. An increase in the next stitch and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch, increase. Then an increase in the stitch after that. And then we'll do our third increase. Then to finish up this round, we're just going to do one single crochet in the remaining stitch. For round six, we're going to do two single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Rows seven and eight are each 12 single crochet, or if you find it easier, you can just do 24 single crochet consecutively. Row eight is one single crochet and an increase repeated six times. For round 10, we're going to start off by doing nine single crochet. And then we're going to repeat and increase one single crochet three times. Start off with the increase, increase. Then we're going to do one single crochet. We'll repeat this pattern again, increase in the next stitch, followed by another single crochet. And then once more, increase. and then a single crochet. And then we'll finish off round 10 by doing three more single crochet. In round 11, we're going to crochet the legs. Start off by doing one single crochet. 
And then in the next stitch, we're going to do a popcorn stitch. To crochet a popcorn stitch, you'll begin by putting five double crochet all in the same stitch. To crochet a double crochet, yarn over first. You will then go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through again. At this point, you should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over once more. You're going to pull through just the first two loops, one and two. And this will leave you with two loops on your hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull through both of those loops. That's our first double crochet. We're going to repeat this four more times, all in the same stitch. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through just the first two, have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those remaining two. That was our second double crochet. We need to do three more. Once you've completed your fifth double crochet, just pull up with your hook. So you leave a nice large loop here. Be careful not to tug on this end because we don't want this loop to pull out. You're then going to insert your crochet hook into the first double crochet that you did. If you're not sure which double crochet this is, just count backwards from your last one. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll pop our hook into there and we're going to push our hook under the front loops first. So we're pushing our hook away from us. Push that through. Once you've done that, you're going to take the large loop that you left, place it on the head of your hook, hold it in place with a finger if you'd like. Then we're going to grab on our yarn end and we're just going to pull on that until the loop tightens up against our hook. The next step is to take this loop that we've just tightened on our hook and pull it through the first double crochet that we went into as if we were doing a slip stitch. So I'm just going to take this loop, pull it through, and then the final step of our popcorn stitch is to chain one. And it's really important that you remember to chain one at the end here because we will need this chain to work into in the next round. So now that we've done our first leg or our first popcorn stitch, we're then going to do three single crochet, but because our popcorn stitches are fairly bulky, it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to see where you need to work into next. So just nudge your popcorn stitch aside with your thumb and you should be able to see the next free stitch. This is the one we want to work into first. So we're going to take our hook, we're going to bring that down to the stitch and we're going to do our first single crochet, then two more after that, two and three. In the next stitch, we're going to do our second popcorn stitch. Like we did before, we'll begin by putting five double crochet all in the same stitch. And five. Pull up with your hook so you leave a nice large loop. We're then going to insert our hook into the first double crochet. Again, if you're having trouble finding which one that is, just count backwards from your last one, five, four, three, two, one. Insert the hook from front to back or away from you. Take that loop, place it on the head of your hook. Then we're going to tighten that loop up. Pull the loop through your first double crochet as if you were doing a slip stitch and then chain one. To finish off round 11, we're going to single crochet in each of the 15 remaining stitches like we did with our last popcorn stitch. If you can't see where you need to work into next, just nudge that aside until you can see the free stitch. At the end of round 11, we should have 21 stitches in our pig all up. Rounds 12, 13 and 14 are each going to be 21 single crochet, but we'll go through the next round together just because it can be a little bit more difficult because we need to work into the chains of our popcorn stitches. So we're going to start off round 12 by just doing one single crochet because that's what we started off with in round 11. So one. 
And then in round 11, our next stitch was the popcorn stitch, which means we're going to have to work into the chain one that we did at the end there. So it should just be right at the top of your popcorn stitch. We're going to go into that chain and we're going to do our second single crochet. Now in round 11, between each popcorn stitch, we did three single crochet and we're going to replicate that here. We're going to go into that first single crochet that we did after our first popcorn stitch. And we're going to single crochet one, two, and three. And then we come up against our second popcorn stitch. We're going to do the same thing here that we did with the first and work into that chain that we did at the end. So into there for our next single crochet. And we finished round 11 by single crocheting 15 stitches and we're just going to do the same here. So we're going to go down into the first free stitch and just single crochet our way to the end of the round. And that is round 12 done. What we will do now is pop in the safety eyes and we're going to place those, I'm using 12 millimeters, we're going to place those between rounds five and six on either side of the head. We'll start at round one and count our way out. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I just realized that I'm supposed to be using nine millimeter eyes for this pattern. So give me a sec. There we go. I've got the right size eyes. I think I just used 12 millimeters so often as force of habit to grab them out. So I'm going to place my correctly sized eyes on either side of the head. Go ahead and have a look at your piggy from all angles. Just make sure that your eyes are level, they're in the correct positions, and then when they are, you can put the backs on. With the safety eyes added, we're now going to add just a little bit of stuffing to the snout here. You don't want to stuff too far out because it'll just fly out and get in the way of your crocheting. So we just really want to add it to this portion of the head. And with that done, we can continue on with the pattern. But what you're going to be crocheting from this point onwards will be determined by if you're crocheting just the pig or if you want to crochet yourself a piggy fish. If you want to crochet the piggy fish version, there will be a timestamp down in the description which you can skip to because from this point, we will be starting the, the jellyfish section of the piggy fish. But if you want to crochet just the pig, we'll continue on with the pig pattern. So again, just jump down to the description if you want to do the piggy fish because you will need to crochet a separate pattern from what we're doing here. Okay, we just did round 12 of the pig. Rounds 13 and 14 are each just going to be 21 single crochet. For round 15, begin by doing 11 single crochet. And then after those 11 single crochet, we're going to do one single crochet, one decrease, repeated three times. So start off with one single crochet, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. To crochet that, go under the front loops of the next two stitches, under the first front loop, then straight under the second front loop. You will then yarn over, pull through both of those front loops, and this should leave you with two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and then pull through those two loops. That's our first decrease. We're going to do another repeat of one single crochet, followed by a decrease, and then once more, one single crochet, one decrease. And this should leave us with one stitch left in our round. We're just going to pop a single crochet into that. 
Round 16 is where we're going to crochet the back legs and we're going to do that using popcorn stitches again. If you would like the slowed down explanation of the popcorn stitch, I will put a timestamp for that down in the description. But we're going to go through this one a little bit quicker than we did the last lot. We're going to start round 16 by doing two single crochet. We're then going to do a popcorn stitch followed by three single crochet, our second popcorn stitch, and then we're going to finish the round with 11 single crochet. After round 16, we're going to begin stuffing the head and the body. And then we'll continue on with round 17, which begins with nine single crochet, followed by a repeat of one single crochet, one decrease, repeated three times. And you'll need to remember to work into the chains from the popcorn stitches like we did previously. Round 18 is nine single crochet followed by three decreases in a row. When you finish round 18, just add any remaining stuffing that you need to. And then we're going to crochet round 19, our final round, and that is just six decreases. When you're done, just snip your yarn, leaving a short tail, pull up with your hook, and then you'll need to grab your needle. We'll thread that through there. And then we're going to close up this hole. To do that, go under the front loops of each of the last six stitches, pushing your needle under the front loop and forward towards you. Six. Once you've gone through all six, pull firmly on the yarn so the hole closes up. We're then going to insert our needle directly back into the center of that final round and then just weave, weave the tail end in through the body a few times to secure it. Snip off the excess yarn and we are done with the main body or head slash body of our pig. At this point, we will add a tail to do that, you'll need your hook again and your yarn. We're going to start off by inserting our hook just above the final round. So you want to insert it here and you also want to try and get it roughly in the center. So if you look at your piggy from front on, sort of in between the eyes is where the tail should line up along there. Bring your yarn in and leave a bit of a, a yarn tail here. It just makes it easier to weave in when we're done. You're going to yarn over. You're going to pull through the stitch that you just, or the space between the stitches that we just worked into, and then you're going to slip stitch to join. And for the tail, you can do a number of different things. You can just create a chain, leave it at that. You can chain and work back down your chain with single crochet slip stitches. You can make a bit of a curly cue, but I just like to do a little Paco stitch. It's not a curly tail, but I think it looks, it looks kind of cute anyway. So to do that, we're just going to chain three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to work into the back bump of the first chain. The back bump is this little bit of yarn behind the front and back loop. So if you're looking at your stitches from front on, you can see the V of the front loop and the back loop. If you turn those over, there's these little bumps of yarn here. That is the back bump. We wanted to go into this first one here. So the back bump of the first chain. In there. And then just single crochet into that. Cut your yarn. And we'll grab our needles again. And we're just going to weave both of these ends that we've left into the body in the same way that we did when we finished off our pig.
And there's one final thing left to do on our pig, and that is to add the ears. But there's two different methods or two different ways to do that, and I'm going to show you both at the end. So I'll do one version on the pig and the other version on the piggy fish. Like with everything else, there will be a timestamp down in the description if you'd like to skip straight to that. Now we're going to go on and crochet the piggy fish version. At this point, you should have crocheted up to round 12 of the original pig pattern. So we should have 21 stitches in our round. Round 13 of the piggy fish will be crocheted in the same yarn. And we're going to do five single crochet, one decrease, repeated three times. five I need to do my final decrease but at this point I'm going to be changing color you don't have to you can stick with the same color if you'd like but I prefer the frills for my jellyfish to just be in a different color to do that you're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches to begin your decrease yarn over and pull through those two front loops so that leaves you with two loops on your hook instead of finishing the stitch in the same color I'm going to put that down I'm going to bring in my second color, which is the color that I would like the frills to be in. I'm going to line that yarn up behind my hook, yarn over in the new color, and then finish the stitch with that. So that is round 13 done. You can cut the original color yarn if you want to, but I'm going to leave it because I'll be swapping back to that for round 15, my next round. So I'm just going to leave that there. For now, we're going to crochet round 14, and that is worked in the front loop only. So the front loop is the part of the stitch that is closest to you. We're going to begin by doing one slip stitch. So in the front loop, I'm just going to slip stitch. And here is where you can add a little bit of variation to your piggy fish if you would like to. In the next front loop, what I'm going to do is put three half double crochet all in the same stitch or, or all in the same front loop. So we're going to go in for one, then back in for two, and then finally three. But this is really customizable. You can really put anything you want in this front loop. So if you'd like to do three double crochet, you can do that. If you'd like to make a mix of half double crochet and double crochet, you can do that as well. You can really do anything you'd like to get a nice frill going on. But for me, I'm just going to repeat one slip stitch and then three half double crochet in the next front loop all the way around. I'm just doing my final lot of three half double crochet in the same stitch here. I've done one. I'm going to do my second, but on my third, I want to change back to my original color. So I'm going to go into the stitch, yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to drop my new color, pick up my original, yarn over in that. I'm going to pull through all three loops on my hook with my original color. When you've crocheted all your frills, you can add the safety eyes and then begin stuffing. I'm not going to add the safety eyes on this guy because another option, if you don't have or you don't want to use safety eyes, is to embroider them on, which is what I'm going to do here. So when that's done, I can now cut... Where did I put my scissors? Found them. Okay, you can now cut the frill colour if you change colour at all. And I'll just tuck that back in there. And then we're going to do round 15. Round 15 is worked into the back loops that we left exposed. So these ones here. So we worked into the front loops for round 14, which left the back loops free. And in those back loops, we're going to do 18 single crochet. Then round 16 is going to be one single crochet, one decrease, repeated six times.
And when you've done round 16, just take the opportunity to add any remaining stuffing, or in my case, all of the stuffing because I forgot to add it before. And then the final round of the piggy fish is just six decreases. And then we're just going to finish off the exact same way we did with the original piggy. So grab your needle and then close up the, the little hole there. And then the next step and probably the most important step for a piggy fish is to add the legs. You'll want to bring in the yarn color that you plan to use. And then we're going to insert our hooks somewhere in the bottom of the piggy fish. I like to start sort of in the center because then depending on how many legs you want, you can slowly work your, your way out. So we're going to bring, bring the new yarn in. We're going to yarn over with it and pull through and then just join with a slip stitch. And then you're going to begin chaining. There's no specified amount to chain. This is just going to depend on how long you'd like your piggy fish stingers to be. So I'm probably going to chain about 11. Like with the frill, you can change this up as much as you like. You can, you know, make kind of a curly cue and put three single crochet in each stitch down the chain. You can do half double crochets, double crochets, whatever you like. But I'm just going to do the single crochet or one single crochet in each stitch just to keep it nice and simple. And we're going to work our way back down the chain, starting in the second chain from the hook if you're using a single crochet. But if you are using half double or double, you may need to start in the third or fourth chain. And all the way back to the start. There is leg number one. And you can, if you would like, stop here and weave in your ends. So just slip stitch into the body again, weave in your ends, and you can crochet another leg, swapping colors if you would like. But what I'm going to do is just continue on crocheting some more legs. So I'm going to swap positions. I'm going to slip stitch into the body, but I'm going to go across one stitch. So make my way across and then I'm going to slip stitch and I'm just going to repeat what I did for the first leg. I'm going to chain. I'll chain a few more this time. I might go up to even 15 to and 15 and then just make my way back down the chain. Again, you can make this as you know wacky and weird as you like. Chuck in whatever stitches you think will look good. And then I think I'm going to add one more leg to finish this off. So I'll slip stitch across, chain, and then just work my way back down the chain. I'm going to be stopping there, but you can continue on and create as few or as many legs as you want to. Grab my scissors again. When you're done, we're just going to take these ends, so the one from the start and the one we've just left from the last leg here, and we're just going to weave those straight into the body to secure them. And there's really only one thing left to do now, and that is the ears. I did say there were two different ways you could do that. The first was the same way that we did the tail. So we're going to take our pick, grab whatever color yarn you're using. Let me untangle this end. And then we're going to insert our hook into the head where we want our first ear to be. So I want mine about here. You're going to line up your yarn Leaving, leaving a little bit of a tail, just enough that you can weave it in easily. 
going to yarn over, pull through, then slip stitch to join. And we're going to create another picot stitch. So chain three, two and three, then single crochet into the back bump of the first chain. And then I'm just going to slip stitch back into the body. So I'm going to go in there, if I can keep the yarn on my hook, I'm going to slip stitch back into the body. And then we're just going to repeat the process for the second ear. You will need to weave in all these ends, but I will do that in a sec because first I will show you how to do the, the second method for the ears. We're still going to be using a Paco stitch, but we're going to create the ears separately and then sew them on. So you want to make a slip knot, leaving a decent tail at the start, again, just so we can weave that in easily. We are going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to single crochet into the back bump of our first chain. And then we're just going to cut ourselves a bit of a longer yarn tail for sewing. So we're still using a picot stitch. We're just creating the ears separately and then sewing them on. So it's basically the same thing, but you know, different people find different methods you know, easier. So I thought I would just provide, provide both. So we're going to create a second ear. And then you'll just want to position the ears on the top of the head with the point, obviously facing upwards and sew those on. Once you've done that, weave in all of your ends. And there we go, piggy or piggy fish as the case may be, complete. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this pattern. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will see you next week with another video.